Okay. Um, so really quickly, we said momentum was mass times velocity. Drake, can you put that away now? Face down. Folks, we're starting. We're back. Okay. All my rules are back in place. We said that Newton's second law could be rewritten in terms of momentum. Another way to think about force is impulse, change in momentum over time, which allowed us to rewrite that as force times time equals impulse or change in momentum. We talked about the law of conservation of momentum. I tended to write that as the sum of all the momentum beforehand equals the sum of all the momentum afterwards. Here you go, Nevada, you're saying you don't have it? You should. I don't think you did. And then we started looking at various ways to apply this. We said we use momentum when there's a collision or an explosion, and we started analyzing some questions. This was Robbie's favorite unit. Uh, we talked about firing a rifle. We talked about tackling. Here we didn't use conservation of momentum because the question was talking about impulse and forces and time. I used the notion of change in momentum and impulse. We did a rocket ship question. Then we started looking at collisions. So example six, here's where we left off. <coughs> a railway car is coasting along a track at seven meters per second. Suddenly, a load of coal is dumped into the car. Hey, this is kind of like a collision. Wham, they collide, except it's being dumped in. Uh, what's its new velocity of the combined masses afterwards? And we're going to assume the coal does not transfer any extra momentum into the car. It would transfer momentum in a vertical direction, but that would just get passed onto the track, which would absorb it, and there'd be no, it'd be negligible. So horizontally, what's going on here? I think this is a job for conservation of momentum. The sum of all the initial momentum equals the sum of all the final momentum. <coughs> I was going to use C for car, but C for coal doesn't work. I'm going to use, how about uh, R for railway car, and I'll use C for coal. There's my abbreviation. Before the, I'll call it a collision, what's moving? The railway car, the coal, both or neither? I think we're going to say we have the initial momentum of the railway car. The coal is sitting up there. You could argue that it's moving, but it's moving not horizontally, vertically. So relative to the direction we're looking at, Simone, the velocity of the coal is zero. They collide. Afterwards, both are moving, stuck together. So we would write that as momentum of both final. Now this year, we're going to pause. And Kayla, we're going to say to ourselves, are there any directions or angles mentioned in this question? And there will be next lesson. Um, and then the physics gets significantly more challenging because then we're going to have to do a bunch of vector math. But in this case, I think the coal is on a nice flat track. The tra sorry, the train is on a nice flat track, and the coal and the train are moving in the same direction afterwards. So no angles. We can solve this algebraically, Nikki, not vectorially. So I'm going to now say, well, momentum is mass of the railroad car, velocity initial of the railroad car, and it's going to be mass of the railroad car plus mass of the coal, mass of both, V final. It wants me to find the new velocity. I think, Julie, that sounds like V final. How would I get the V final by itself? I don't need to do any vector math here because everything's in a nice straight line. I can just divide the bracket over. The final velocity afterwards is going to be the mass of the railroad car, velocity initial of the railroad car, divided by mass of the railroad car plus mass of the coal. 
If you're really observant, again, Tori, you might notice I'm being way more careful with my vector notation. I'm reminding myself whenever I can, don't be sloppy. Vectors and direction makes a difference. So the final speed, by the way, if you had a car rolling along and you suddenly dropped something into it, what do you think would happen to its speed? Increase, decrease, or stay the same? I, I think the answer is going to be smaller than 7. If I get an answer bigger than 7, I've messed up. Okay? And I think it's going to be in the same direction, positive. So let's see if we... Uh, 6 times 10 to the 3rd, that's 6,000. Times 7. Divided by 6,000 plus... How much was the coal? 2,000? 8,000. I can do that in my head. Heck, I might be able to do this whole thing in my head. 6 over 8 is the same as 3 over 4, so it's going to be 7 times 3, which is 21, divided by 4. 5.25? Yeah. Meters per second. It slowed down, not by an awful lot, because the mass of the car is so much bigger than the mass of the coal. It shrugged most of it off. It's the difference between having somebody really big jump on you when you're walking and having a little kid jump on you when you're walking. With a little kid, you probably catch them, absorb it, and just kind of shrug it off. A big person will change your velocity quite a bit, so the mass plays a role. So far, so good, James? A couple more concepts here. Again, today, everything is going to be in a straight line. At the most, we'll have to deal with one direction being positive and one direction being negative. So. A car traveling 33 meters per second collides head on with a car traveling 24 meters per second in the opposite direction. You know what, Drake? I'm going to underline opposite direction. I'm going to have to let one way be positive and one way be negative. If the cars stick together, what's the velocity of the wreckage immediately after impact? OK. Sinead, what's this question asking me to find? Velocity. Is there a collision here? This is a job for conservation of momentum. The amount, the sum of all the momentum that we started with has to equal the sum of all the momentum that we finished with. Now, if you don't write that, that step there, I'm not going to freak out. If you get good enough, if you get comfortable enough to already start realizing how you're going to break it down, Rebecca, I'm OK with that. But I will tell you, on a test, I will give you one mark for writing that if you can't get anything more. because. By the end of the year, you'll have so many different strategies. Hey, you recognize this is a momentum question. That's worth one mark. OK. Hmm. Well, Sinead, before the collision, what's moving? Car one, car two, both, or neither? Both. So I'm going to go momentum of car one initial plus Momentum of car two initial. Wham! They collide. After the collision, what's moving? Car one, car two, both, or neither? Both. Stuck together or separate? Okay, sep if they were separate, I would have momentum one final plus momentum two final separately. But since they're stuck together, I can go momentum both. Now, this year, Connor, we pause and we say, uh, any angles? In fact, honestly, this year, when we first read the question, if we see angles or directions or compass directions, uh, we'll already start to freak out and say, ding, 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 I better really ramp up my game and pay attention. The questions, instead of taking three lines, they'll take about a page. But for now, do you see any compass directions? No, I do see uh, a left and a right or a forward and a backward. I, I see opposite directions. Uh, I'm going to let, I think, this one be positive, and I'll let this one be negative. You could do it totally the other way around. You're, you'll get the, the correct answer still, too. Just be consistent for the whole question. OK? So I'm going to have mass of car 1, velocity of car 1 initial, plus Mass of car 2, velocity of car 2 initial. That equals m1 plus m2 stuck together v final.
I want to get oh, V final by itself, yeah? By the way, for what it's worth, could I also tell you their final stuck together velocity and ask you to figure out, hey, how fast was car two going? Get that by itself, sure. Or get that by itself, sure. Okay. I could even, for giggles, ask you to find one of the masses. That'd be a bit trickier, but it's doable. For now, though, let's find their velocity after the collision. Uh, I guess V final is going to be mass 1, V1 initial, mass 2, V2 initial, uh, divided by M1 plus M2. By the way, I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. In particular, this makes a really nice multiple choice question, and I'll tell you why in a second. Hey, let's uh, insert our numbers here. Mass 1, 1,200. Sinead, what's velocity 1 initial? Plus, what's mass 2? 1,900. Sinead, what's velocity 2 initial? I got her, didn't I? What, Robbie? I have to make it negative. By the way, if this was multiple choice, you better believe I would have the answer for a positive 24. In fact, I'd probably make an answer A just to really tempt you, the first one that you would see. So negative, because they're in opposite directions. We're in vector land. All over 1,200 plus 1,900. Now, if I get a positive answer, it means the first car was going with enough momentum to cancel out the momentum of the second car and keep going forward. If I get a negative answer, that means the second car won the collision and the first car ended up going backwards. If I get zero, it just happens that both of their momenta exactly canceled out and this was a head-on collision, wham, and they just came to a stop. What do I get? Do I get zero? I can't remember with this one. I think I, I did once and I changed the numbers. This is also good calculator practice. Brackets around the top, brackets around the bottom. Do you get negative 1.9? Or am I wrong? I might be wrong. I'm right. So in this collision, if this is car one and this is car two, we had something like this. They collided, and I guess car one ended up going backwards. Car two ended up still going forward, but very slowly. V final equals, I would accept negative 1.94, or if you said positive 1.94 in the direction of car two's original velocity, I'd take that too. It doesn't, there was no reason why we let car one be positive. We could let car two, one be negative, or car two be positive. But I'm going to go with uh, negative 1.94 meters per second. Example eight. So collisions, explosions, where they're wanting you to find the velocity. Andy, that's a job for conservation of momentum. Andy, what's 8A asking me to find? Second word of the question. Impulse. What's another word for impulse, folks? Change in momentum. OK, I don't think I'm going to be using conservation of momentum. The sum equals the sum equals. I think I'm going to be using the fact that change in momentum, impulse, also equals force times time. I haven't read the rest of the question, but is the rest of the question asking about forces or times or something like that? I'll bet you in part B. OK, so here we go. Andy, what does part A want me to find? Well, impulse is another word for change in momentum. There's two ways to find impulse. This is what's on your formula sheet. On your formula sheet, it has this. But I also know what change in anything is. What's change in anything? Which is going to be final velocity minus initial velocity, mass times mass. So I'm reading part A. Did they give me a pair of velocities, or did they give me a force and a time in part A? Pair of velocities. That's how I know I'm going to use final minus initial and not force times time. It's going to be mv final minus mv initial. Andy, what's the maths? 
So how many kilograms is that? 0.145. What's my final velocity, Andy? 50? 50. Good. Minus. Mass, you said, was 0.145. What's my initial velocity? Oh, thank you. I knew I could count on you. Where'd the negative come from? You know what? Let's underline that. Now, south and north is still linear. We don't need to bring out the heavy trig, but we do want to get in the habit of noticing compass directions and going ding, 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 ding. I've got to be more careful. Now, at least this wasn't, by the way, a tougher question would be final velocity was east, initial velocity was south, because then you have things being hit at angles, and we're going to get to that next lesson. And we're going to be doing a lot more trig than you ever thought possible. So what's the change in momentum? What's the impulse? By the way, I like this question. I like this question. This would make a nice multiple choice question. And you better believe as one of the answers, oh, I forgot to put the, huh, after all that, I forgot to put the negative 40 there. How about I add that? Uh, you better believe as one of your answers, I would have a positive 40 there to pick from. In fact, I'd probably make that answer A, just to really annoy you. Uh, 0.145 times 50 minus 0.145 times negative 40. I get an impulse to get 13.1. 13.05 or 13.1 units. What are the units for impulse for change in momentum? Kilogram meters per second. Or Newton seconds, I'd take both. Here, since I went mass times velocity to find the impulse in my brain, probably kilogram meters per second would be the units that I'd think of first because I went mass times velocity. Andy, let's keep going. What's B want me to find? Um, force. force. Now, you could do this by going F equals MA. I do know the mass. Uh, finding the acceleration. We have lots of methods to find an acceleration. In fact, I don't even think you need to go winner minus loser. I think you could probably go V final equals V initial plus AT. What did we find in part A, Andy? Uh, I have an equation that has impulse and force in it, this one. Another way to calculate impulse is force times time. Andy, did they give me a time in part B? Yep. Oh that I'm going to find the force this way. Way easier than going through the hassle of going F equals MA and finding the acceleration and all that. So the force is going to be the impulse divided by the change in time. I get lazy, Sam. I tend to drop the change in. That was a long blank. You going to make it? OK. We will have cool videos and stuff. And, oh, there will be a bonus video game for this unit. I haven't put it up yet, but it's a pretty good one. Uh, 13.05 divided by one, oh, millisecond. Milli is 10 to the what? Somewhere on your formula sheet, I gave you the prefixes, right? Milli. I think it's negative three. Someone want to double check? Is it? Oh, OK. A few years ago, I taught a girl her last name was Millie, and so she always signed her name 10 to the negative 3, which I thought was just so nerdly cool. That, that, yeah, that, that scored points with me big time. Hey, my first name is a fundamental unit. So how many Newtons of force? Uh, 13,050. I'll go to three sig figs, 13,100 Newtons of force which is about right for a, a baseball bat. These numbers, this is, these are pretty big velocities here. Uh, we're coming in at about 80 miles an hour. That's a slow major league pitch. And then we're sending it out at about 100 miles an hour. So that, this would be maybe very good high school baseball or college baseball. So yeah, 13,000 Newtons with a baseball bat. That's, that's about right. For those of you that are baseball players, if you're wondering. I don't. No numbers. Your softball, yes? Yeah. Have you clocked your pitch? 62 miles per hour, but it's a shorter distance. So 62 miles per hour, it's around 28 meters per second. 
you roughly divide by two and make it a bit smaller to go to meters per second. It's a trick I've learned over the years. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite divided by two. It's divided by like 2.1 or something. Like, I don't know. So I've learned you divide by two and subtract a little bit and you're pretty close. <sighs> Example nine, a car rear ends another car. The second car was initially moving in the same direction. What's their common velocity if the car is locked together during the impact? Okay. Um, do I have one where they don't stick together coming up? I'm trying to remember. No? Okay, well, then let's do this one. Hey, Robbie, this is a collision. Your favorite. And it wants me to find a velocity. I don't think I'm going to be using change momentum impulse. I think I'm going to start out by saying this is a job for the law of conservation of momentum. The sum of all the momentum before the collision equals the sum of all the momentum after the collision. I don't see any uh, changes in direction in terms of like north and east or anything, or angles or thetas. Uh, there is a rear, there is a collision. I'll have to decide maybe which way is positive and which way is negative. In fact, I'm going to let this velocity be positive. I usually do show that by just putting a plus sign above it to remind myself. Yeah. Oh, so I can let this also be positive? Good. But I, w I would still double check that, right? I noticed that, but thank you for pointing it. That's what I was hoping you guys would arrive at. Okay, um, before the collision, what's moving? I think car one and car two. Would you like to say it? Why don't you say it? You don't want to say it? You sure? You can do the collision if you want to. <laughs> Bam, they collide. Okay. And they stick together. Again, if they didn't stick together, I would just have two more momentum terms. It's a little trickier to get something by itself. You have to subtract and then divide, but it's not that much harder. So this is going to be momentum of both, final. OK. Mass 1, V1 initial, mass 2, V2 initial, mass 1 plus mass 2, V final. Again, James, let me emphasize, I could give you this same question, but instead I could tell you the final velocity and I could say, Robbie, how fast was the first car going? Or how fast was the second car going? Okay. Um, this wants V final. So it's going to be mass 1, V1 initial, plus mass 2, V2 initial, all divided by M1 plus M2. Mass 1, 2,000. V1, positive 15, plus mass 2, 1,000. V2, positive 6, divided by 2,000 plus 1,000. You know what? Maybe I can do this in my head. It's going to be 30,000 plus 6,000. Oh, yeah, I can do this in my head. It's 36,000 divided by 3. It's going to be uh, tw 12. Is the answer 12? Yeah. Which makes sense. The first car slows down, the second car speeds up, and they stick together. That's what happens during a rear end collision. Two eggs are dropped from a height, H. One egg hits the floor and breaks, splut. The second egg falls in a pail of water and survives. What's the main reason the second egg survives? Ooh, 
Robbie just jumped right to that. You're smarter, Bald. Maybe. There you go. Yeah, your, your brain was overheating when you had the hair. Head, head shave works better. Talk me through that. Robbie, Rob, so Robbie said, uh, because T increases. Walk me through your argument, please. Okay. I'm, I'm going to argue, first of all, even before that, I think they both experience the same impulse. Because they start out at V0, they both hit the ground at the same V final, and they both have the same math. So if I was uh, convincing myself in my proof, I would say same impulse. Okay. Sure. If I wanted to write it, yeah, we could write it out in English as well. But yeah, if we can increase time, this is what seatbelts are all about. And again, because car collisions typically are such short amounts of time, we can double the time. Like normally a car collision might be, what, uh, 0.1 seconds or less. If I can have the seatbelt have the collision last for 0.2 seconds, which isn't that much to have to do, I've just cut your force in half. Well, that's not bad. That's, that's pretty good. So this is the technology behind seat belts, et cetera. Uh, let, let's take it one step further then. If we look at a graph of force versus time for the egg hitting the floor, it will look as follows. Which of the following graphs, A, B, or C, would best represent the force versus time graph for the egg hitting the water? Well, first of all, what's the area of this graph, tell me? No, I don't know. Well, to figure out, I told you a good trick is to try and multiply. Area is always multiply. Multiply the variables or the units. If I multiply the variables, I get force times change in time. Oh, you know what the area of this graph is? What is force times change in time? Impulse. Now. Robbie, you just said both eggs have to experience the same impulse. Yes? In other words, both graphs have to have the same area. OK. But longer time? So which one? A, B, or C would be the graph of the egg hitting the water. Which one must be wrong? I, I, I'm kind of cutting this in half in my mind right there and kind of fitting it into here. And I'm cutting this one in half in my mind and trying to build. I think this is too big an area. I need some numbers to really convince myself. But I think that's too much impulse as well, too much area. I think the answer is C. I know A is wrong for sure, and I'm pretty sure B is wrong. Uh, explain your answer using appropriate physics concepts. I, I, I think we just did. I hope, I think. So, what's your homework? Going to give you lots of time to practice this. Uh, homework number one is good. Two is good. Three is good. Four is good. I'm good with five. I'm going to nuke, skip six. Uh, seven is work and energy, which is cool, but I'll pass on that. My brain is telling me that there's a problem with number eight, but I think I corrected it. Maybe there's no problem. Oh, let's go eight. Actually, I kind of like number eight. Skip nine, we'll do 10. 11 is good. 12 is good. 13 is good. 14 is good. 
15 is good, and 16 is good. I put the answers to 14, 15, and 16 here at the very end because I stuck those on last year at the end because they were good conceptual stuff. Okay? You can probably get this done in class. I'm still missing some homework from previous stuff.